Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, I'm Atika and um, just want to have a quick sharing with you about HLP. Um, this past few days, um, I have some friends uh, contacting, uh, texting me and asking me about the, the proposal and, and their work, their ideas, which is super interesting because um, um, it reminds me to the earlier days that I have first um, applied for HLP. So um, this Friday, Jumat ni, is uh, the last day that you can submit uh, the proposal at 5 p.m. So there are like less than like 42 um 48 hours for you to do that. Uh, since this is like already Thursday, and um. What I can have uh, give uh, some quick tips and also um, some advice on uh, writing your proposal. So uh, based on the uh, discussion that we have, uh, the talk that we have with friends who are applying for HLP, uh, when you talk about writing your proposal, so your proposal is dependent. You you remember that it's only uh, eighteen thousand aksara lapam. Uh, it's not 80,000, 1,800 aksara um, The character is the one that is we are going to look at. So, dalam kataan, dalam 280 hingga 300. Um, mine, uh, when I, I read, I wrote that, I think, less than 300, I rasa. But, I think, no, 300, I think. Yeah, so, 315, macam tu lah. Alright, so what uh, I'm going to talk about your proposal is uh, pastikan you punya proposal tu padat dan juga uh, jelas. First, you first line of your proposal, you just straight away talk about your general goal, your your aim for this study in general. Lepas tu barulah you um, masukkan maklumat dari segi uh, the significant, uh, okay, why you want to, uh, you give uh, the reasoning, so reasoning why you want to pursue that particular of study. And then, okay, let me check uh, some comments that I discussed with my friends, some discussion that we do. And then you uh, you talk about your, the significance of your study. Maksudnya, uh, contohlah you ambil uh, study pasal, uh, ramai orang nak ambil study pasal pandemic ni. Um, some of you, uh, some of our friends are still uh, uh, looking for the pedagogy. Uh, the the four skills in English. I check was English last, but I'm going to English. And uh, you go uh, be very specific. When if you want to go for a skill, a uh, learning skill, uh, or even learning strategies, choose one, and you have to really uh, give the uh, uh, you have to reason, and then you have to make sure that it is what is the significance of you doing that kind of research. Uh, what is the significance for you to dive into the research? Okay, itu sangat penting. So, we talk about the general aim and then the significance of your study. And uh, so, you, your role as a teacher and as an educator, what do you want to do with it? And with that, you terus go for your specific aim for this study. Specific aims, maksudnya, you punya objective. Kalau master, dia biasanya tak dua objective. And for PhD, maybe three to four objectives. So uh, I had my ultimate. So I actually had two objectives. I which is a bit, which is a lot actually. So it would be nice if you to specific, you put your objective. Dari pada objective tu lah sebenarnya, you boleh tahu, uh, kita boleh tahu, mereka orang yang baca tu boleh tahu sebenarnya uh, study you ini sesuai design jenis macam mana. Is it my um. Uh, uh, qualitative, is it quantitative or is it mixed method? So from that only we can go um, identify your, uh, your your method. And when you talk about the this special objective ni, objective ni, you have to clearly explain your method. Macam mana cara awak nak buat benda tu? Be very specific how you want to do that in the limited number of uh, uh, words. And also finally, the 
the impact of your study, which we want to appeal the uh, the stakeholder. So, for example, for this COVID learn um, during this pandemic, there's a lot of study we can go. And for example, some of you would like to go to explore um, students motivation in uh, 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 in virtual learning or hybrid learning. We want to explore about hybrid learning in Malaysia in post uh, post COVID. And also perhaps you want to go for exploring the CFR. Um, teacher perception in uh, autopon teaching practices in CFR. So there are a lot of uh, areas that you go, you can go into. For example, if you go to writing or you go to uh, reading or you want to go to CFR or any write or, or any learning strategies, you have to be very specific and you have to make sure that in two years time, is it still relevant for you to study about it? Sebab daripada mula kita mohon permohonan ni, sehingga kita semua study, we have at least one year time and then daripada kita belajar first year and second year we have another year so at least like two years tu dalam sudut tahun tu study you relevant lagi tak masa tu so this is this is the question you you have you should have in mind and uh, i hope that you can have the clear idea how you can do this better and about the hlp um proposal writing um, of course, you don't really have to go for like writing a lot of research or literature about it. You just have to go for um, what uh, you, what is the most significant at this time or what is the most uh, recent about this study. What is the gap? So, when you read research article, you can see uh, research gap. Tu. Apa, apa gap there in there? What is not yet studied? What is not yet studied? What is not yet uh, and also you want to make sure that you know uh, the novelty of your study. Novelty ni maksudnya, how, how original is your idea? Ada orang buat lagi tak yang you, you, yang you nak kaji ni? This is why uh, we want to know that uh, your topic, your research proposal should be something that is very appealing to the, uh, uh, to the stakeholders or to, to, the, uh, to KBM. Okay. Uh, another thing about another thing about writing your proposal or getting your idea better is you when you are at school at uh, what I'm uh, discussing is for those who are teachers or uh, lecturers or, or even um, um, uh, pegawai dekat mana-mana bahagian lah who are under KPM uh, you reflect on your uh, work as uh, the experience you uh, that you have in that particular field. You, for teachers, you reflect on your uh, experience at school, your experience in the environment, your experience in the setting. And if you want to go for pedagogy, maybe you can go for uh, whatever the teaching practices uh, that you have done for these many years you have done in the classroom. Take it out, use that as the um, basic or the the main idea for you to go for research. I think it is a very good reflection when you go for one thing that you are really, really passionate about in teaching practices, uh, in your, uh, as, uh, as of, uh, like for you being a teacher, maybe you are a um, teacher trainer, maybe you are, uh, apa? Uh, ketua something, setan bahagian, uh, kita panggil JU, Jurulatih Utama. So with that kind of experience, with that kind of expertise that you have, that will be a very good um, uh, advantage for you which differentiate you and the other candidates in doing this research. And But basically, it's all about your research topic, your research proposal, how significant they are in actually doing it. So we have to be clear, we have to be uh, thorough and even though it is short, um, it, you, you, uh, it is a lot actually to think, to, to compact everything in one piece of paper. So I hope it will help you with that and yeah, that's it. Okay,